Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. Special coverage of the 50 cent late pick four at Prairie Meadows on Thursday. The feature race on Thursday is the grade three Iowa Oaks for three-year-old fillies. 15% takeout on this pick four wager. We begin with race number seven at six furlongs. It's an optional claimer, approximate post time, 844 Central. I think there's a lot of speed in this race, but I have to admit, I'm kind of against some of the shorter price horses in the Iowa Oaks, so I want to spread and maybe get lucky with the price. Yeah, there were three that I was most interested in in this race I do think that there is a little bit of speed in here the one that I was most interested in is the five Reagan Harper I think the turn back is going to do this one wonders can win from off the pace but isn't going to I hope anyway isn't going to come from 50 out of it where the seven Danita's ruler is probably going to be taking up residence I'm on that one as well I'm going to go five seven and then if I want anyone that's also going to be able to sort of press I would think off of the layoff I think the three you're okay shotgun is going to be a little bit fresh ready to go I'm going to go 573 in this one. I like Reagan Harper like you. I really love the turn back. She's run well turning back in the past. I was visually impressed with her performance sprinting two back, albeit over a sloppy track, and she's going to get pace. Reagan Harper I'm using. I'm going to use your OK shotgun for all the reasons that you mentioned, but I'm also going to use two others. The one Luna Azteca, the four Big Sister Ridge. Both of these horses have pace, but Luna Azteca is going second off the layoff. She ran a fast race three starts back. Big Sister Ridge, third off the layoff, and I'm hoping that maybe she can sit just a little bit because she was dueling with two other horses last time out, and maybe the jock learned a lesson. The interesting thing about this race for me when I first went through it is you look and see the highest last out buyer, three horses, they all have 63 buyers. The majority of the rest of their page is considerably faster than that. So, I, you know, if you're just one of those people that looks at it and says, well, can they run a 63? You're probably going to need to run a heck of a lot faster than a 63 if you're going to win in here. So you like the 5 and 7 mostly Most. here. And maybe you'd use, use a little three. bit of the 3 as a yeah. backup. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to use this from a ticket maker standpoint, but the four horses I definitely am using in some fashion are 1, 3, 4, and 5. Race number 8 is the supporting feature on the Iowa Oaks card, and it's the $100,000 Sailorville Stakes for fillies and mares going six furlongs. Now, where the last race, the first leg of the pick four, a lot of speed. I'm not sure if there's a ton of gas in here. Chantelaine's going to show some speed. You know she'll be forward. Can she take these gate to wire for Asmussen and Mike Smith? You know, it, it's possible, but there's a part of me that looks at it and says the only way that a horse like Ms. Biz can win is by going right to the front. So maybe they don't go gangbusters early, but I do think that those two horses drawn directly next to one another, I think they're going to make it honest enough anyway. I want two horses in here. I want the seven, uh, thoughtless, but I'm more interested in the six, I'm a looker. Now, I'm a looker, this is nothing more than you and I've talked about her in the mm -hmm. past, where she doesn't necessarily like to win races, she didn't like to put them away. If Brad Cox was able to turn Green Mask into a killer, who, he was a little bit on the, the, the soft side, if you will, and now all of a sudden he likes to just go and finish races. Always talented, but he goes now and he finishes the deal. I'm hoping he can do the same thing with I'm a looker. She's always been talented, but we just need, need the killer instinct. Green Mask has got it now. I hope she has it too. I've been wrong with Green Mask, and I'm hoping I'm right with <laughs> I'm a Looker because you know she's going to get bet, bet based off those company lines. We yeah. haven't seen her in a while, and to me, she's still I'm a Looker, I, yeah. and she's going to get money, and I'm going to try to beat her in here. I'm going to use Chantelaine because I think she's faster than Miss Biz, and I think she's faster than the number five Dreamin'. But the horse that I'm really interested in is the number four Hail Storm Slew. I think this distance is very good for her. Two starts back. I know it was only against fellow Oklahoma bred but she fairly pounded that field mm. from the back of the pack. And last time out stretching out, she was prompting a good solid pace going a mile and 70 yards. She hung in there nicely to finish second. She's been freshened up, and she is another horse that has run well on the turn back in the past. So if the pace is faster than I think it'll be, uh, it looks on paper, the four hailstorm slews where I'm going to go. I'm going to use Chantelaine, and I'll use horses like Dreamin' and Thoughtless as backups. Thoughtless especially, because last time out, she looked pretty good from stalking range. She could get a nice setup. Yeah, and I just like the fact that she's two for two at Prairie Meadows. She's also shown that, you know what, she's she's a horse that likes to go out and win races as opposed to the horse drawn just to her inside. I'm looking. Six, seven, six, basically, seven for, for you in race number eight. The third leg of the 50 cent late pick forward Prairie Meadows on Thursday is your DRF.com formulator race of the day. That means if you head on over to the race of the day event page on DRF.com, you'll be able to download free formulator past performances and get our in depth analysis video for the race. From a pick four standpoint, I'm using my two top selections. The two pinch hit, the three Shane's girlfriend, the six Natalie's mischief is a C at a big price. I'm only using two in here. Uh, I'm going to go with the 10, the horse that I actually 
like Swing and Sway. I think she could work out a good trip, and I wonder if she's going to be that horse that... I feel like th this is a, a, an opportunity for a few horses that maybe they could just burst onto the scene. I'm not saying that they're going to be grade one caliber, but maybe this is the kind of race where somebody... Maybe it is Natalie's Mischief. Maybe she's the one that kind of just punches through, wins this thing by two or three lengths. Uh, I'm going to use the 10 Swing and Sway. I'm also going to use the 5 ever so clever. I think in many ways... She's the horse to beat. I think there's going to be an honest pace, and she's going to run at the end. I, I agree she's the horse to beat. I, I have to admit, I've never really been a big price of, uh, a big fan of her. She was a big price when she won the Fantasy two starts back. She'll be a fraction of those odds here, but she's going to get the pace mm -hmm. scenario, and if she runs that Fantasy, she's probably going to win. But I think she's going to take a lot of money lower than that 7-2 to two morning line. I'm against her, and I'm against Jordan's Henny, even though I think she's uh, a solid horse. I'm against Chanel's Legacy, who's 4-1 to one on the line. Tapa, 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 vaguely yeah. interesting yeah. to me, Adam moderate price. The anchor leg of this pick four wager is race number 10. It is a mile for Iowa bred condition claimers. Where are you going in here? I think the six somewhere else is somewhat interesting. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to go, though. There's only two that I want in this spot. I, I say that because I think there are a lot of horses that thus far in their career, keep in mind, this is not winners of two, the only time that many of these Phillies have ever, or the uh, Geldings and, and Colts have ever won is when they're outright on the lead. And I don't think that many of them have the early speed to actually make the front. Whereas with the four, call me Mr. Mister, has at least shown the ability to sit most recently. And I understand a lot of people don't like the, the class height going from maiden to now facing winners. Guess what? When you're facing winners that don't like to win races, it ain't that big of a, a jump in class. And I also like to stretch out. And it's kind of the same idea with the six somewhere else. First time stretching out in distance has already shown that he can sit a little bit. And it really, okay, second and third, six from 11, that's a little bit worrisome. First time stretching out, I think that helps. 46. At first glance, I'm with you with the 46. Those are my two and only A's in this race. My backup would be the five Tour de Glory, who is one for 21. And if you watched his last race, you're like, how did he lose? He loomed up on the outside and he just refused to go past. But he earned a fig that day. He is comfortable at the distance. If the four and the six had earned these races and had run these races around two turns, sure. I would be care I would probably be comfortable leaning on them. But I will use the five Tour de Glory, who does seem at least comfortable at this distance, although not a prolific winner as my backup. It's a fun sequence at Prairie Meadows on Thursday evening. Races 7 through 10, two stakes, including the Grade 3 Iowa Oaks. An approximate post time for the first leg, race number 7, 844 Central. Best of luck.